You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here by my mother, Mandy, and we are happy to be back for another week of What is a Woman. So we'll begin our episode by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek, meek and humble of heart, heart make our hearts like, like unto thine. thine. So sorry I missed everybody last week. Um, I was just very busy last week, so I wasn't going to be able to do it, and my mom doesn't like missing a week, so... She I flew solo. To fly solo, and uh, solo, solo. Yeah, so <laughs> I didn't. I, I didn't really like it. She didn't it. like it. Yeah, no, it not was. A fan. It was just. I had a lot I wanted to say about that topic, and because I was just there, you know, mumbling, ra- not mumbling, rambling, rambling. Like that's what it feels like. You're just yeah, talking you're into not- a mic, and you're just rambling. I missed a lot of my really good, good points, right. but <laughs> it is what it is. It's hard to carry a conversation with yourself. It is very hard. It's much easier to do it with another person. So right. a- anybody who gets up and, you know, talks, to, to, well, I, maybe if you're doing like public speaking, it's easier. You have an audience or. Right. I think a podcast is different because you're talking to, it's a conversation. A podcast is a conversation. Yeah. It's not a sermon. It's not a speech. It's not a, you know, speeches so. and sermons are different. You know? Well, anyway, glad you're back and. Now we can, you know, talk to one another. Right. And all you people out there in the all living rooms that are, are feel like and you're I part was, of our conversation. I was happy to see the comments of the people that missed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so what uh, what do we got? Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. So something really extraordinary happened last week. And I have, um, it's a really extraordinary story. And I have her permission. I asked her permission beforehand. I said, can we tell this story on the podcast? Mm -hmm. And she said, absolutely. Because it was so, it was just that cool. (laughs) So a good friend of ours... A good friend to the show, Alexandra, and she's a she's she's a Canadian. Two weeks ago, she became yeah, a Canadian. She's one of us. <laughs> Get out your toque. <laughs> Get <laughs> but anyway, Get she out in the boot. Out in the boot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was reading one said, "Hey, bud, bud." We say that a lot. But anyway, never mind that. Never nonsense. mind all that. <laughs> so, um, she uh, she joined our Arch Confraternity. And so she's been coming up um, once a month. It's it's a little bit of a drive. I think it's at least three hours. Yeah, yeah about that. Maybe for her, more. Maybe more for her to come here from Michigan. And she comes up and she stays at my house and, and uh, spends a night and, and uh, goes home the next day. So, you know, she wants, I mean, because she was originally, not originally, originally, but she, she married a Canadian and she was part of our parish, Alexandra was, for a very long time. So she misses us guys and wants to come home every once in a while. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so she's she come up for the meeting on Friday. So that she has to, you know, go through Michigan. She has to cross the border. And she crosses the border at the um, Sarnia Port Huron border. Mm-hmm. And she gets across the border. And when you get across that, you're on a highway called the 402. And it's a big highway that's going to take you to the 401. Yeah. So she's driving down this highway, minding her own business. And she gets a flat tire. Yeah. And here she is, a woman, all by herself. Now, um, Sarnia is about an hour and a half from where we are. Yeah. So she's still a little bit away from us. I mean, she could have called. She, I mean, she has in-laws here. She could have called multiple people to come help her. But she pulls off. She hears the rumbling. She pulls off the road. And she's she's got this flat tire. And she's like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? So the first thing she does, of course, is call her husband. And she says, I got a, I'm on the 402 and I have a flat tire. And he says, he goes, he's thinking, oh, this is going to cost us so much money. I'm going to have to call a tow truck. I'm going to have to, you know, do this. You're not going to get to the meeting. You know, you're going to be sitting there at the, on the highway of the 402 for a very long time. So anyway, this car is driving by and it sees her pull off. No, it, it. Yeah, no. They drove ahead of. Her. They drove. They drove by her. Yeah, they were driving. And then they pulled off. Yeah, they they saw her and pulled off. And the car happened to be my brother and my son. They're working in Sarnia, mm-hmm. so they were driving behind her, and they see this car pull off. And my brother says, "I think that's Alexandra." 
Yeah. And my my son goes, no, it's not Alexander. Like you're crazy, you know. But he he's no, I'm sure it is. I sure it is. And he pulls off, and he's quite a distance up, and he's waiting to see, you know, if it is her, or maybe you know she has the kids with her, and somebody's got to go to the bathroom or something. You never know. And he says, no, um, something's wrong. So they start backing up their car down the shoulder of the highway to get to where she is and of course she sees this car coming towards her and it's two men with long okay. hair <laughs> and she's so and she's on the phone with her husband and she's like panicking and telling her husband like there's two men they're backing up towards me they have long hair <laughs> I'm freaking out, you know yeah and she's like she's like and, and he's going stay on the phone stay on just the phone. stay on the phone yeah. because i you know, it is a little it's bit. It's a little unnerving. It's very scary. I, I saw some people get ha carjacked. I saw a video of it in Toronto. You're on the side of an open highway where the woman no all by one herself, around. right? And then they back up and then they get out of the car. And I think she just, it's Vince. <laughs> and she just, she was so excited. She went up and she was just, you know, hugging them. And she was so happy. They put the donut on the car for her and like every, all this stuff. And the, the funny part about this story was, they were um, like a couple, they were like a minute or so away from the turnoff they were going to turn off on. Right. So if she would have, if her flat tire would have happened, even, I'm going to say two kilometers up the road. Yeah. They would have turned off. They would have turned off her. and they would have not seen her. So what are the chances that, that you know, she break, gets like she's not tire. even, you got to remember, she's not even near where the people is that lives that she knows. Yeah. Like they're 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 just happen to be working in Sarnia and be coming home. Yeah. So what like when I when I hear stories like this, you know, it makes you it just it just kind of sends like little butterflies up your spine, you know. So she was able to come, she was able to get to the meeting, she was able, you know, first thing in the morning, she ran and got her tire fixed. Everybody went home, everybody was happy, you know, and it was like it was like nothing, you know. Yeah. Like. You know, you talk about God knowing your needs before you even know them. Yeah. Right? It's incredible. Like, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't always work out that way. You know, sometimes you get a flat tire and your day's ruined. No, but, you know, often, often I always think, you know, my family and I, we always, um, my kids and I, we don't get in the car without saying road prayers. Even right, if we're going right. 15 minutes down the road, we always say those road prayers. So I think, you know, when things like this happen... I mean, and I'm sure Alexandra's the type of person. She says road prayers. Yeah. You know? um, this is maybe years and years of road prayers. Right, right. Catching up to you, you know. Yeah. Your prayers being answered. You know, prayer knows no time. Right, right. You know, so there, that's something to think about. So I know. Don't and say your road prayers, everybody. And say I don't, your road prayers. And I don't believe in coincidences. No. I don't believe in them at all. That they should be coming past them at that exact moment. Yeah. You know, like for whatever reason, God's divine pl providence, his divine plan. It was just, I mean, she's called, she, we're sitting at home and you were talking to her on the phone and she's going, well, Vince and Daryl are here fixing my tire. And she's like, oh, Vince and Daryl. And I'm like, how are Vince and Daryl near her? Yeah. You know, like how is that happening right now? And it was, it's just incredible. Like, um, I think that's why we shouldn't stress. We just should not stress about things like when and I've seen it happen. Well, this is an instance, but I've seen it happen so many times in my life where something drastic is about to happen, and uh, like all of a sudden the way is paved, the doors are open, everything just flows. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't always happen that way. Yeah. No, it's not. And it, but it's what? Not but when you see it happen, you know this is God mm -hmm. doing every doing it right yeah. because it's just way too. Miraculous, miraculous and wonderful and yeah. wonderful to um for it not to be right? right right i mean a lot of times we have to just offer things up and accept the sufferings and accept the cross but, but when sometimes you, we get a joyful but sometimes yeah. god says not today yeah. <laughs> not today, today you get a freebie <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was a great thing that was a great thing for her and uh we just wanted to share that story with you but uh so we're on to in a topic. Um, we're still in the love of dress category. Yes. Yes, so love of dress. Right, so we're still on this category. And i got to tell you, I've read ahead. I've read it all. I've made some notes. And 
all I keep thinking about is um, that book, The Sanity of Sanctity, when he says, the case looks a bit against us. Yes. Especially when I when I read this chapter, I thought, oh boy. Yeah. You know, it gets, it gets, it gets a pretty heavy here, this love address. So why don't we just dive right dive into, into book. and you just start here, right there. All right, so we'll go ahead here from Mission and Duties, the Young Women, Love of Dress. Quote, It is the mission of every female in our days to protest, at least by her example, against that love of extravagance, which, like a cancer, is gnawing into the very vitals of society, and by, her, by the faults and bad habits which it occasions, renders useless to a vast number of persons the example and merits of Jesus Christ. End quote. Right, so um, it's our it's it's not just our job. It apparently is our duty to be an example against the love of extravagance. Yes. And 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 the the author tells us right um, that it's like a cancer. That's uh, yeah, that's a pretty powerful word word there cancer is gnawing into the very vitals of society right and we have to remember and i want you to because this 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 little chapter here is is going to make it very evident how the classes are divided remember this is in the 1800s where the classes are severely divided there's the rich and the not rich there's no middle there's no middle right so um the book has a lot to i mean so i mean generally speaking the people that are going to fall into this love address category are going to be the rich. Yeah. Right? So, right. Okay. Let's. Quote, The world protests against the doctrine and life of the man-god who chose to be born in a stable and die on a cross, and who uttered a solemn woe against the rich, not on account of any inherent vice and wealth, but because of the luxurious dispositions which it begets, and the faculties which it affords for the gratification of the passions. End quote. Right. So, I mean, when we talk about us as Catholics, what we're talking about always is our main goal in life is the imitation of Christ. And what did Christ do? He was born in a stable and died on a cross. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we're living in our life and we just, uh, we seem to forget that. Like, I mean, when we say the third joyful mystery, we're, we're praying, um, uh, about the nativity, right? Yeah. And when we pray that, we're asking um, not to have a love of riches. Right. To love the poverty as Christ loved the poverty. Right. You know, he wanted nothing of the world. And here we're called to sanctity, so we have to have that same disposition. Yeah. We can't be in love with the things of the world. Um, and, you know, mo and for women, a large part of that is dress. Um, well, and speaking of love address, Christ had one garment. Really? Yeah. You must have read, read that. that. I can't remember where I read that, but I read it, and Christ had one garment. Wow. And and I read that, you know, I don't want to, I mean, I, I don't remember it exactly. Was it the cr but day I, Christ died? Maybe. I feel like you get a lot of information from yeah, that book. Yeah, but, because, well, I really love it. But no, it, I, th I thought I... Some, I thought maybe I heard it somewhere that the garment miraculously grew with Christ. That's in the holy hour. Yes, that, that's yeah. from that's from the that's from the sermons of Saint Bernardine. Yeah. Okay. I knew because I knew. I know. <coughs> I'm like I didn't read that somewhere. I heard it said yes. somewhere. Yeah. That's right. That the garment miraculously grew with Christ. Yeah. And that he had one garment his whole life, and it was actually the cloth that he was wrapped in, wow. in the manger, you know, or something like that. Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's so. incredible. It said. It also said in that little thing, "To be rich is not a sin." Right. But it breeds. What it breeds. Right. Is sinful. Right. Right. So I mean, like, I mean, we can think of some rich people. We can think of some rich saints, like Saint Elizabeth of Hungary, yeah. Yeah. or even uh, King Louis. Yeah. Uh, I think it was the fourteenth. He was the saint of yeah. France, right? Yeah. You know, the very rich people, you know, and they, they basically, you know, you know, um, uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth of Hungary, she particularly, she wanted nothing to do with the riches. Mm -hmm. She just took it all and her position and fed the poor with it. Right. 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 So let's read on. Okay. Were we on two? Three. Three. Okay. 
Quote, women, therefore, who have some solicitude for the salvation of their soul should protest in their turn against this disorder by the simplicity of their habits and oppose a salutary check to those deplorable customs which impel nations to their ruin and hurry souls into the eternal abyss, end quote. All right, there's that word right there, disorder. Right. Our book calls love of dress a disorder. So when you think about all the stuff that, you know, all the disorders we have in the world, all the mental disorders, um, you can kind of slide right up there with it, love of dress. Right. Like, I mean, you think of, think of the people that will say have this disorder. Right. Like the Kardashians. I, I mean, I always, they're my go-to for some reason. When I think... Well, because they're so extreme. When I think of anything that is worldly, I always think of them. Yeah. But, you know, they're part and parcel of a whole group of people, right? right. And it's a disorder. Right. It's not orderly. It's no surprise that none of those marriages work. Well, and even, you know, <laughs> I'm going to just use this as an example, but... You know, if you ever watch, not that I am suggesting this, but if you ever watch the, those award shows, what's the one for the movies? Oscars. The Oscars and the dresses and yeah. the ridiculousness. And they have one. When you see those dresses, all I see is disorder. Well, they have one in particular. I can't, I think it's the Met Gala. The Met, where they have like a theme or something. It's, it's usually very satanic. Very, Yes. You know they do a lot of mocking of one year, uh, of religion. Rihanna dressed up as a pope. Yeah, well, they do a, a lot unquote, of sexy pope. Ugh. You know, like you know? they do a lot of mocking of religion. They do but a lot the of the whole thing. What I'm, my point is, though, is the whole thing centers around the clothing. Right. But it's just disorder because the outfits are ridiculous and over the top and not. They don't make sense and that you can't walk in them. You can't do anything in them. They're just ridiculous. And they put so much effort and time into these outfits. Yeah. And, and it's just silly. It's right. silliness. Right. It, they're totally opposed to the Gospels. Yes. Which is what the book tells us, right? When we're yeah. doing something that is opposed to the Gospels. And the Gospels in this hand is born in a stable, died on a cross. Yeah. Right. All right, so, quote, they should guard particularly against sanction, sanctioning such customs by their example and thus becoming a stumbling block to their neighbor. All women are in measure answerable for each other in this respect, for everyone seeks to justify her extravagance by the practice of others and imagines that in an outward show she ought to be on par with those whom she equals in wealth or position, end quote. Well, a couple, a couple things here that... Again, the author points out the dis the um, the separation of class, mm -hmm. right? And I, if I, I believe he's more talking to those who are not of the rich class here, because he's saying you're trying to copy the people of the rich. She equals one. Yeah. Right. The and all the there and that women are answerable to each other. Right, so, I mean, and nobody does trends more than women. Right. Like, it's just trends constantly. This is a trend. Oh, I got to have these. They're in, like, um, not just trends. What do you call it? Like, when something's in fashion or in style. Hell yeah. Right? You know, this type of shoe's in style. This yeah. type of clothes is in style. You know, like the yoga dress right now. Right? And and what we have, all we have is a bunch of copycats. Like, everybody yeah. just runs around copycatting each, each other, other. Yeah. right and that as a woman we're answerable for this behavior right. this this trending and i gotta have this because it's in style mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff right so okay quote it is in this way that a public opinion is, is introduced contrary to the maxims of the gospel and the teaching of the church Thus are certain proprieties established, which are altogether opposed to the profession of Christianity and the solemn engagements of baptism. <coughs> what, in fact, are the pomps and vanities of the world, which we renounce before becoming the children of God? If not those habits of luxury, which so many Christians indulge without scruple, imagining that they can thus follow to the glory of eternal life that God who purchased it only by the humiliations of the cross. Faith, however, assures us that no one will be made a partaker of his glory, if he be not first a partaker of his humiliations, end quote. Right. 
So, um, so women, women are responsible. They're responsible for intro in introducing public opinion, not the men, the women, yeah. right? So when, when they go with the trends and they go with all this stuff, they're encouraging what is against the gospels. And let's be real. If it's a trend and it's a trend of the world, chances are it goes against God. Yeah. Well, really? I mean, look where we are now. Like everything is so immodest. Well, that, but you said, you said you went to the fair. Yeah, I went to, we took our kids to the fair and you can't even go to the fair anymore. No. It's of the world. Right. And, and you know, because you can't control who's going to the fair and you know, the outfits and the immodesty is just. You said the trend was what you the saw. The trend, was, what I saw was cargo pants, cargo style jean pants and a top that I would call a bra. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what all the young this girls. This is what were. all the young girls were wearing. These were the exact same thing over and, and over and, and over again. And I just kept seeing it on repeat, and and it got so bad, it got so bad that I just thought, you know, I I can't, I can't take this anymore. Like I can't, you know. So and I thought, well, I'm in this situation, and what can I do? What can I do here? I'm here with my family. I'm here with in laws, and and you know, I can't make a big scene and a big to da. And we're sitting there and the kids are going on rides. So every time somebody passed me and they, you know, were wearing something immodest, I would say Hail Mary for that person. Yeah. I would say Hail Mary for that person. Right, right. And I would offer a Hail Mary up to Mary and say, please um, intercede and ask God to have mercy on this person. Right. And that's Our Lady of Fatima, too. Remember, she what said. what else can I do? She said, people go to hell because there's nobody to pray for them. Right. So, you know, and I so thought, that's a prayer for a person who's probably never had a prayer no. said for them. And I thought, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here all day. And if I have to be here, I'm going to make it worth it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, a lot of busy fair <laughs> and a lot of Hail Marys were said. Yeah, well, that's great. That's you know, the so, you know, and I, and this, uh, this, that what you just read also brings up a very important thing. Our baptismal vows. Yeah. You know, and uh, we say it every Easter, right? If you yeah. go, if you go to Midnight Mass, you renew your baptismal vows. Yeah, where you renounce Satan, his pomps, and the vanities oh, of the world. Yeah. And we have to ask ourselves, how serious are we at renouncing the, this? Yeah, we say that. I mean, and I know I've said it for years. Yeah, you know, and not really given it a thought that much of a thought. Like for years, I mean, obviously, as I've gotten older. You yeah. think more. Yeah. But when I was younger, you say those things, but you don't really connect what that means when you renounce the pomps and vanities of the world. Well, and it's like, you know, there because the renewal of the baptismal vows is also in the Marian Missal and the prayers after communion. Yeah. So I, I say that after communion. And it wasn't until recently that I actually slowed it down. And I was like, yeah, I'm literally asking God to... Like I'm renewing my pledge to re to renounce Satan and give up the world, but am I really? Yeah. Like you know what I mean. I say it every Sunday, but am I really? Yeah. And then you know it's kind of like that thing, and I know we've said it on a podcast before, where we're saying these prayers and we're asking God to throw on more suffering and throw on the crosses, and but then we're like, but do we really want that? Yeah. Is this yeah. What I'm no. Really asking for? Well, I always call that the peeling away of the, the onion. onion. You yeah. know, like it's like wait a minute, I've been. You say for these this? things, <laughs> and you just say them mechanically, and for some reason, and I don't know what it is, they don't resonate. Yeah. And then one day it just hits you like somebody you threw a brick at you. Yeah. Wait a minute, I'm asking Please for suffering. suffering? <laughs> no, what? I thought <laughs> I thought I was begging to take it away. You know, and then here when you say the prayers of the church, you're just asking for these things, yeah. you know, because you want to imitate God. You want to imitate born in a stable, died on oh a cross, gosh. an imitation of Christ. That means I must become a saint. I must embrace these things. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, quote, how can a woman who pretends to be a Christian in good earnest not feel a sense of confusion and become seriously alarmed when decked off herself in precious garments she perceives at her side a fellow creature covered with rags, whose misery she could easily have relieved, but she limited the expense of her toilet to what is strictly required by her rank. 
Oh, let us not be surprised at the envy and hatred which rouse the poor against the rich, which are fostered in secret societies and sometimes explode in insec ins insurrections that can be suppressed only by the strong arm of the law. Let us no longer wonder in beholding society divided into two hostile camps, that of proprietors and that of men who possess nothing, and the peace of nations continually threatened with the calamities of civil war. Is not the cause of all this to be found in the insolent display of wealth, which contrasts so strangely with the humiliating destitution of the poor? The latter know very well that they are the children of the same Heavenly Father, and that they have been redeemed by the same God. How can it be expected that they will not smart under the contemptuous treatment of the rich, to whom God has given the things of this world only for the purpose of dispensing them to those who are in need? End quote. So, uh, yeah, that was a lot of reading there. That was a lot of reading. That was a big one. <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I mean, I, I, th I thought we just had to kind of go at that whole thing. A uh, couple things I'm going to pull out, right, is, again, this author is explaining there's two classes, the rich and the poor, right? And how, as you as a woman, maybe you're in the wealthy class, can you dress the way you do and then turn around and look at the poor in rags? Yeah. Right? How can you do that? Right. And, um, you know, which does, it causes envies and jealousies, you know, like how can you, why would you want to be that person who goes around displaying their wealth on their body just so people can be jealous of them? Right. Right. It, the author goes on to, to say like, this is the thing of insurrections. Right. And that's, you know, when I think about that, I think of, um like the French Revolution, right? right? They were starving. They were starving in the streets. Like, I mean, it it wasn't an evil insurrection. It was. But the royalty were not looking after the needs of the poor. Right. And at the very last line of that, it says, you know, the money is given to the rich to look after the poor. Yeah. Right. So if you happen to have money, when you die... You're going to be held accountable for what you did with that money. For what you did with that money. Yeah. You know, these are all things that I think just we just says, you know, the poor are going to be held accountable for how they handle being poor. Yes. But the rich the same. Yeah. You know? Right. So, but these are all things we don't necessarily think of, especially in um in the age of the middle class where we're just living to pay our bills and we're living to, you know, pave our cell phone bill and our Mm -hmm. You know, all our, our, you know, what do we call them? First world problems. Yeah. Right. You know, we're just living, keeping up with the Joneses. I got to have a car. I got to have this. I got to have four wheel drive. You know, whatever it is. I got to have a boat. You know, wh yeah. whatever it is you got to have. Yeah. Right. And people who don't have anything and you're prancing around with Just your, keys. yeah, your <laughs> extravagances. Right. Like, I mean, it's better. It really born in a stable, died on a cross. Yeah. Where does that fit into born in a stable, died, died on a cross? Yeah. You know, this is our imitation of Christ. And if we are blessed to have money, we have to do our very best with that with that, and not to be extravagant with it. Like, I mean, you know, I mean, I have a very, I have a very wealthy cousin, very wealthy. I'm driving his car right now. It's a 2004 model. What is that? Crown Vic. A Crown Vic. Crown I love Victoria. I love it. They call it the boat. He bought it used. Yeah. <laughs> and now he gave it to me. Yeah. He he's very, very elderly. He, he got rid of his license. But he certainly, for somebody as wealthy as he is, he's... It's not the car you would expect. It's not the car <laughs> you would have expected, like right? Somebody with his kind of money would most likely be driving around multiple cars yes they might have a sunday car and a tuesday car and that, <laughs> you know? yes and something uh not so practical as a crown vic i mean it, it was a nice car in its day in 2004 yeah. but uh but not by any means the uh, car of a, a millionaire let's just, billionaire yes. let's just you say know. very affordable for most people <laughs> You know, so, but anyway, I mean, so God bless him for that, for yeah, not, for not, not being obnoxious in his wealth, because yeah. he certainly was, and he certainly was very generous, but, but we have to, I mean, I, I don't have the wealth that he has, no. nor do you, but we all live very com comfortably. Yeah, we do. 
We live very comfortably, and it's so just, you have to, and you have to be careful with that too. Yeah, because you're not rich. Yeah, you know. Well, that's why I'm living, saying the author comfortably. You have to. The author is in a stage where you're rich or you're poor, right? So the French during the French Revolution, we live in this culture where it's I don't even know what you. I mean, there are uh, we. I mean, we have we are getting to the stage right now here in Canada where we have an, a devastating amount of homelessness. Yes. We have a we have a huge housing crisis. I mean, that's because we're letting a lot of people in the country and the, the prices of food is skyrocketing. Yeah. Extreme, you know, like there's a lot going on, so it kind of makes you wonder what's coming. But at the moment, we all live very comfortably and we certainly don't go without. Right. You know, so we have to say to ourselves how blessed we are yeah. and that maybe we need to rethink how much we're actually giving back. Right. You know. Right. Okay, so continue on here. Quote, disciples of the poor and crucified master, why do you parade in every direction the trappings of vanity and pride? Wherever you go, a subject of confusion awaits you. Will you visit the house of God to implore the mercy of him who has denounced your extravagance and riches? Will you appear at the holy table at the risk of meeting there some unfortunate being whom you allowed to starve and who comes to beg of God the grace of not murmuring against you and not hating you on account of your inhumanity? If you open the gospel, you will there read your condemnation. End quote. Mm. Wow. wow. Right. Um, there's something in there that I'd like to touch on that struck me. Um, where Will you implore the mercy of him who has denounced your extravagance and riches. And I think that's something we have to really keep in mind and remember that God denounced these things. Yes. He never mentioned having money. He never mentioned yeah. making sure you have a roof over your head. These are things he never mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Because why? They're not important. Yeah. Really. No. And, and you know, people may get mad at me for saying that, but... Really, when it comes down to it, having a roof over your head is not what God said is important. No. It's not. He said you became a saint. You become you a saint. You become a saint. God denounced these things. Right. Now, I'm not saying we all give up our houses and go live on the highway. No, we have children <laughs> to know, look at. And we live in a certain after. society. And we do live in a certain society. But we do have to remember, and, and Father, on Sunday, uh, we had Father Craig this Sunday, and he said it something in a sermon that I had never really heard myself before, but that the Gospels withstand the test of time. Yeah. Prayer knows no time. The Gospel, when God had the apostles, like the Gospels written and everything like that, they are just as applicable back then when they were written as they are today. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, like even this literature that we're reading. Right. There are certain things that don't really make sense you know they talked a few quotes back about the toilet yeah you know so you kind of got to go like oh what well, was you know but god spoke in parables yes christ spoke in parables so that all could understand right 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 there's no like oh well that word doesn't mean this or this is you know and you're sitting you're thinking i think anyways uh-huh so, no absolutely you're correct so i'm just agreeing when, yeah so when father craig said that about like you know the gospels they're timeless. I was like, they're time. Yeah, you're right. Like, and you, you know, know. So all these things that, you know, like Christ denouncing the rich and the wealthy, like not people, but wealth itself uh -huh. and saying, you know, it's not necessary. Right. And, and we got to take that very seriously. You know, and, and the whole thing about our mission here, our lofty mission of becoming a saint. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with money. And I know that's a lot easier said than done. Um. Uh, if you don't have people to care for. Right. Like or, I know, you know when, when, when you're when, trying to pay your bills and you're struggling, I get it's very hard. You know, like you have to worry about where you what your children are going to, to eat or wear. Eat and, or, you know, it's a lot easier when it's only you. Yes. When it's only you, you have to think about. Right. I mean, if you have other people, you have to, and most people have other people they have to think about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, li a little bit difficult, you know, more of a panic to get the things that are needed. For them. Well, you know what? You know what I think, and and this may pe I hope people don't take this the wrong way, but um, I honestly I think that's where 
and I mean, it's easy for me to say this because I'm not struggling financially. Right. I'm not wealthy, but I'm not struggling. Um, there is a level of faith that comes in. Yeah. There's a level of faith and trust in God that comes in that I think we we forget sometimes. That, you know, we need to be happy where God has put us. Right. I think we mentioned that in one and, of the... Oh, I know we've mentioned it several times. And, and it, it just goes to when you're... Str- and they, you know, not now in my life, but there have been times in my life where I've struggled. Oh, yeah. Financially and, you know, not that I want to admit it, things were taken away because I couldn't pay the bills, you know. Yeah. So I have lived through that. So have I. You know. Um, and I and I do think that, you know, that though these are crosses that God gives you. Right. To detach you from to your. To detach you. Yeah. From your stuff. Because you know at the end of the day all the things that were taken away from me. I didn't need them anyways. Right. Yeah. Because I'm still here and I survive. So, right. Right. You know. And. If we're going to. And this may sound very. <laughs> morbid and weird. But. If we're going to die in a pit in a hole with nothing. Yeah. That's what God wanted for us. You right, know? right, right, right. Yeah. Like, you know. That's and, the and confidence in God. That's that, that's that confidence And his holy God, will. That, you know, you have to. And and it's the same thing, you know. Um, we were talking a little bit about our woman's meeting about um, about our time and when it's time to go and putting that trust in God. And that prayer. And I stand by it. That's the prayer after the communion. The communion prayers and the Marian Missal. Resignation to God's holy will for your um oh great now I can't remember exactly what it's called but for it's a, happy death or the no to resign yourself to, to whatever God. death God has destined for you right designed for you or whatever the exact it's a short little prayer but anyways it's one of my favorites yeah because when you really read it nice and slow and it's like yes not like you know not this like okay God I will accept whatever death you give me but with a little caveat on the side please let it be at this time or something yeah you know? yeah no. Yeah. No. Yeah. Whatever death you have are pleased to send me, please let me accept that as your holy will. Period. Period. That's yeah. where it ends. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, we have to put everything into perspective that we're striving for sanctity and it is attainable. Yeah. I think it is attainable. We yeah. just have to mean the words that we, we say. say and yeah. we profess to mean. Yeah. But as, you know, the sanity of sanctity says, the case looks a bit against <laughs> us. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. Oh, we did you have anything else to add? No, I there? thought, was that the end of the chapter? No, I got one more left. Oh, I didn't write anything oh, else. So this will be a surprise. This will be a surprise. Well, wing it. <laughs> Quote, if you listen to the word of God, you will hear a rigid judgment pronounced against you. If you appear in public to exhibit the costly attire which covers your person, how will you endure the sight of those poor people who have scarcely a few rags to cover their emaciated or exhausted frames? Will you have no fear of heaping upon your head the maledictions of those happy, unhappy creatures whose misery you insult by your extravagant display? Even if you escape the effects of their anger, you will not be able to flee from the vengeance of the living God who has condemned the use which you make of your wealth and instructed you by the word and example how to employ it. End quote. End of chapter. Wow. Yeah, so that's a pretty... Uh, yeah, you, we have to stand... But, I mean, a lot of us, you know, my, especially myself I'm talking about here, we, we tend to think ourselves, you know, maybe better than we are. Yeah. Like, you know, we have to stand before God and account for all this stuff. Like yeah, all well, these vanities of the world. That what he, basically what the author is saying that you know those that had with those who had nothing and looked at you and were like look at what they have and yeah they didn't share they didn't clothe the the poor I mean God literally it's a corporal work of mercy yeah right to yeah. clothe the poor right um so when you're standing in front of God and all those people that are coming up to the gates before you or whatever and I was naked and they did not clothe me right you're answering for that are you not you are it sounds like it, it sounds, that's what it sounded like to me and yeah. back in the 1800s they didn't mince the words like we mince them now yeah so, you know we they didn't make it soft like we tend to make it yeah. now well and you know what I I have to say and I may be alone in this and I don't care but I'm I'm over the soft I am too. I'm over the the tiptoeing around and the soft and the... Because I really... I do not think it benefits anybody. Right. I mean... I I, I don't... We're going to die whether the date is 1890 or 2023. 
2040. I said 2040. Give myself a little more time. <laughs> you know, and, and this is going to apply. Yeah. This is going to apply when we get Just there. Just like it did for these people back in 18, whatever, you know. You know, God doesn't change. No, nope, it doesn't. As it was in the beginning, it's, it's now and ever shall be. be. World without end. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, so that's the end of the chapter. And then the next chapter is novel reading and the theater. <laughs> So I'm going to guess we can put that down as books and television. <laughs> That's how we'll bring that up to the to, to our century. Anyways, um, are, do you have anything else that you want to no, add? No, just, uh, just, you know, just again to recap how great God is, especially helping our friend Alexander on yeah, the highway. Wonderful that was wonderful gift, wonderful gift. And, um, and I know all, y all you ladies out there have many examples of God's goodness. Yeah. We have many examples, too, of picking up and carrying that cross. Oh, yeah. But, you know, he likes to throw us the miracles every, every now. Every once in a while to keep us. <laughs> like, I'm here. <laughs> I hear you. And I'm doing like, it like, for you. You know what it is? It's like, I look at it this way. It's like, you know, we all have our crosses and we all have them and they're heavy days. They're heavy days. But then there are also those days where God sees, you know, like, you're falling a little bit under your cross. So I, I like to look at it as, you know, God just grabs that cross a little bit. And he just lifts it up just for a moment right. to give you a breather. And then he's going to put it back down. But how? But when you say that, though, how great is God Yeah. that he does that for us? That's the way I look at it. Right. The cross just or you know what? it up briefly. And how much does he, like, he's, he's in charge of everything. Yeah. And, I mean, he proves it with little acts, acts like, like that. that. You know, I'm yeah, well, and the other thing too, and it gets me weepy. I can think about it. How much God loves us, yeah. Even though we continually treat Him like, yeah, oh, we we're so bad we, to him, we continually you know? turn to the pomps um, and the vanities, right? And then God is still there, yeah, when we are so undeserving. And I mean, my favorite. I have a lot of favorite prayers, but one of my favorites from now until the end of time will be. Um, oh Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come and enter under my roof. Say but the word and my soul shall be healed. That is my favorite prayer because it is the truth. Right. I am not worthy. But that, that what St. Paul but said. But you come to me anyways. I am not worthy. Or I, I posted on Facebook as I was listening to St. Um, uh, not St. Father Bernard's. <laughs> <laughs> a sermon yeah <laughs> uh, or not yeah, his talks on uh, spiritual life? the spiritual life yeah and the one thing he said was i am closer to a flea than i am to, to god <laughs> yes yeah. you know and it's a great thing to remember yeah it is it is it really you know it, it just it just puts you back like it just humbles you and reminds you that you know you're nothing without him you need him and you're not worthy Right. You know, but God will come anyways because he loves you that much. I know. It's incredible. It's beautiful. And also to remember, as much as he loves you, he loves all those people in the rags. Or even he those. He loves all those people at the fair. Even those people at the fair. And, yeah. You, know, you're no, you are no better than them. Yeah. You're not. No, because you know better. Because you know better. Yeah. Right. So you anyway. Know. So anyways. So we'll leave it there and... Uh, We'll be back next week. Hopefully, I won't be gone on any little vacations. No, I wasn't on a vacation. <laughs> you were working. but I was working. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, everybody, we hope that you have a very blessed week. Um, as always, may our Lord bless you and our Lady guide you. And St. Teresa, pray for us. Pray for us.